All right, so I've made a rudimentary little jig here on my fire brick area to set the the piece in so everything can lay flat. And I just set my other piece in and line everything up nice. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Make sure it's more or less centered on there. Great. I'm going to put a little flux. I use borax. This is a nice ceramic dish. I'd use a borax cone in if I were doing that. Uh, I'm not. I just got a little bit of powdered borax in here. It's a little more when you use the cone, you get these cones of borax and you polish it like a, in this uh, mortar here, like a mortar and pestle, and, and it creates such a, a fine, silky um, uh, you know, uh, level of, of, uh, of borax that with a little bit of moisture in there, it makes a, almost a cream. This is like damp sugar. Yeah, that spit. Sorry. professional would say that your goal should be to use as little flux as possible and that's why they come up with all of these high-tech fluxes that emit massive quantities of fluorides things like that um, to me a little extra time in the pickle or a little extra time on the buffing wheel or on the grinder or sandpaper um, isn't such a big deal and the most effective flux that I can find is borax and maybe boric acid. The high-tech fluxes that leave a cleaner, um, a cleaner finish when you're done, they don't work quite as well as a flux. So I mean, there's trade-offs and you know whatever, but that's just how I roll.
worked out slightly more excitingly than I had planned. Uh, functionally, it seems to have worked. The interesting piece would be the clay drying out, hardening, and then exploding in teeny tiny little pieces. But, um, hey, at least they're teeny tiny little pieces instead of great big razor sharp pieces. Ooh. All right, I'm going to let that cool down a little bit. Working on a fire brick, a piece can stay warm quite a bit longer. And whereas you think it should have had plenty of time to cool off and harden up, you grab it and it all falls apart in your hand, which is heartbreaking. Hello again. Uh, I am getting to a point on this where I am coming into uh, a technique that might be valuable and uh, thought I would share it with the rest of us. The problem is, um, as we're putting this hand together, that we are actually brazing the pivot point, the joint, on the two ends of, of a brass bar. So you get, um, but the way I'm doing it, maybe it's not ideal, but uh, I, uh, I join the, put the joint on one end and then uh, line it up with my angulation chart just to make sure that all of my, uh, all of my spars, all of the bones are the right length. And I can do this all with planning and rulers and write it all down and then one, one mathematical error later, and the guy's fingers aren't the right length. So um, this is just kind of my normal methodology of, of uh, putting piece by piece out as I go, more or less building it um, as an expression of my present thought instead of as a realization of earlier planning. Um, that makes it sound like a good thing, but take it for what it is. So this is where we're at now. It's kind of cool. These are the four metacarpals, each with the half of a knuckle joint here. The barrel on the bottom. Uh, these here are also the same, um, the base of the 50 Browning machine gun cartridges, uh, uh, brazed to a tube, and that will create a pivot point at the wrist. And then I have uh, one, of the, one of the phalanges done and it's still a fair bit of, of fitting, but uh, you see it'll pivot in like manner. <laughs> um, so it's it's coming together and it's looking pretty cool, I think. We're getting there. So, getting back to what I was saying, um, we braze the joint at one end, I measure it out, I cut the other side for the next piece of the joint, and when I go to braise that one, this one's going to fall off. And I don't want that. Um, in general, a, 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 jewel, a traditional jewelry making approach would be to use a, a lower melting temperature solder. They have a couple of different temperatures of solder, silver solder, um, hard, medium, and easy, I suppose. Uh, each one uh, melting at a lower temperature, you start with the highest temperature melt first and then you can uh, braise with the next one down without loosening up the joint of the first one. Well that's fine, but that means carrying a whole lot more stock and I don't think you get a lot of advantage over other ways of dealing with it. If you could adequately brace the material and pack the existing joint with flux, then the silver uh, solder that's in this first joint would flow, but it wouldn't go anywhere. And then when you took the heat away, it would harden up uh, just like it did the first time. Um, that's that's a, an okay approach, too. The, the point is trying to keep everything immobilized. Um, another way would be to sink the heat. Put something on this side that drew that extra heat away so that... Um, this side never flowed out even though the side you're working on gets red hot. That's the approach I'm going with today. Not exactly sure it's going to work, but we'll find out. If it doesn't, you'll you'll never get this video anyway, so there it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pack the existing joint with a cold, damp clay. Not sure how that's going to go, but it's a mineral clay, so hopefully it won't 
burn, um, which should help to both keep it um, together and also draw off some of that extra heat. And then doing this, I'm going to have to work as quickly as possible to get the other side up to temperature, flow the solder in, uh, and close the process down uh, so that I don't burn off that heat sink and, um, and lose, lose the original joint. Worst case scenario, I got to grind everything, uh, uh, take all the, the pieces all come apart and I have to go clean them up and re-solder them. So it's not a big loss, but in the, in the realm of all of these pieces having to do it over and over and over again, yeah, that'd be a big pain. So.